We are not preparing ourselves. We're not preparing our children. We're not preparing our loved ones. We are sat in our Netflix shows. We are sat in our Instagram this. We are doing this. We are doing that. We are doing everything else. But the one thing that we need to do, we are failing to do. The one thing we need to do, we are failing to do. Hello, everyone. Peace and love to you all. Um, I just wanted to come really quickly to speak about all that's been happening. All that's going on around us. See, the Lord has shown me so much that I, I am really contemplating how much I can share. Because the Lord shows us things sometimes because he wants us to pray about it not necessarily because he wants us to come and and and, and make noise on social media and and, and 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 talk about it too much but sometimes the lord shows us things because he wants us to pray and prayer is the one thing that a lot of believers underestimate its power i was a christian that didn't really take i mean i didn't really put much value on prayer unless i needed something unless i wanted something and then i would get on my knees and fast and pray and and you know i'd make that some sort of i made it kind of like my request time with god i didn't i didn't really understand the value of prayer and and i know there's a lot of christians a lot of us christians that really we don't we still don't understand the value of prayer we don't understand <laughs> we don't understand that prayer is a weapon see the lord hasn't given us swords to fight physically we don't have swords to fight we, we don't we, we don't have you might look at a question and say how are you gonna fight you're saying you want to be a warrior for christ how are you gonna fight where's your weapon where's prayer prayer i'm telling you a lot of us underestimate the prayer of a righteous man the power that he possesses because let me tell you something before we do anything in life we have to pray I don't care. Before we wake up in the morning, we have to pray. I say before we wake up in the morning, you can't pray if you don't wake up. <laughs> when we wake up in the morning, we have to pray. Before we take a step from our bed, we have to make sure we have prayed and committed ourselves in the hands of God. Because I tell you now, see, a lot of people are dying. And how many Christians have you seen that have almost been like unsensitive or unsympathizing to to, to 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 what's going on i was a chris i was one of those people see because we have we are strong in our faith at the beginning when this thing started i almost acted like it wasn't even real i just said well you know and thankfully the lord has given us that kind of faith where our reality is more than just what we see we have a reality that is beyond this physical world but at the same time, we are still in this physical world. So the Lord still wants us to be sensitive to these things. He doesn't want us to just ignore it, especially when it involves people dying. Oh, oh, how it hurts. How it hurts my soul to know that people are people are losing their lives. And it might be people who have not given their lives to Christ. Souls that are being lost and we are being Unsens unsensitive towards these things. We are just we are just walking around like there is no reality to it see the lord is showing me how this thing is getting around and it's not necessarily by you touching me and me touching you that is what the world is telling us that we have to social distance ourselves we have to sit at home we have to you know keep ourselves locked up but i'm telling you this thing is being spread in a way that none of us really understand this thing is being spread in a way that is beyond what we see and beyond what we touch beyond what we feel you can sit in your house three weeks having not touched anyone and see anyone and find yourself coughing and, and being caught up in this disease this thing is spreading around in a way that we have to fight it with our prayer the Lord wants us to pray. It's so urgent right now for us to get on our knees and pray. I have never come on social media and be so passionate about anything. But I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, we need to take this more seriously than we've ever taken anything else in our lives. If you are a Christian and you are not praying relentlessly, you are not play, praying nonstop, then we are failing ourselves and we are failing our brethren. If we are not finding a time where we can sit and really pray, I know we all have busy lives. Some of us have kids. Some of us have this and that we need to take care of. But there is far more important things right now that require our time in prayer and, and fellowship with God. There is far more important things that require our time, more than our Netflix, more than our, our leisure time, more than our entertainment. We need to be praying. I know I was one of those Christians that was just so caught up in my own faith that I refused to really understand and see what was happening until the Lord shook me and said, look, see, 
We are nearly at 5,000 deaths in the UK. And people are saying, oh no, it's only young people. It's only older people. Young people are not being affected. Oh, it's, it's only those that are health are, are, are risk, um, that the immune system isn't strong enough. Da, 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 da. But I am telling you that pe the, the, the youngest patient to have died in the UK is five years old. And I'm not saying this to bring fear or, or, or to, 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 to scare people. But I'm just saying this to awaken the love in our hearts. We need to love more than we are loving right now. Right now, we are loving ourselves. We are loving our comfort. Some people are even happy that they're having time in self-isolation and they don't have to go into work. Some people are actually pleased that they have time to catch up on our Netflix shows and they are relaxing and they are having a time of their life. But I'm telling you right now, people are dying. Now is not the time for us to feel pleased and happy and joyful. We feel joyful in the Lord, yes, because we know he has absolute control over what's happening. But the Lord needs us right now to get on our knees and to pray and to cry out to him. Whether it be through fasting, whether it be through whatever means that we are to give up ourselves so the Lord can use us to break this thing that is happening in our world today. You think the Lord is pleased to see his children die? Whether they are believers or non-believers, the Lord says, love your neighbor with all your heart. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say love your Christian neighbor as yourself. Love the believer as yourself. He said, love your neighbor. That means every single person. Every single person that walks around us, we are to show the same love that we would ourselves and our families and our friends. And if we are not doing that, then we are, we are, we are selling short. We are failing. We are failing ourselves and we are selling short of the love that the God, God has given us. I don't quite care who is offended by this. I don't quite care who, who, who feels like, no, 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 you, you, you got it wrong. No, no, no. I don't quite care to be honest with you because the spirit is talking and when the spirit moves, we ought to listen. We ought to listen because right now people are losing their lives. People are dying and we are, we are just so unsensitive towards it. A lot of us are carrying on like our daily lives like it's normal. It's not normal. This is not normal. You're sat in your house stuck 24 seven and you're telling me that's normal. You're, you're going to act like things are normal. Things are not normal. These times are pressing times. And although the Bible has spoken and given us warnings and the Lord has shown me that the, 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 the warning signs and the, 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 the things that are to happen before he's coming, they're much closer than we think. They are much closer than any of us can imagine. You see, if you read the Bible, this is why I keep stressing that this is a time where we need to spend time reading the Bible, preparing ourselves spiritually, preparing our bodies, preparing our health and preparing all that we need to prepare. Asking the Lord to teach us as Christians, because as Christians, we need to be trained. People don't realize this. The thing being a Christian, yeah, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but there's a training that needs to take place. You see the disciples, they spent three and a half years, three and a half years with Jesus Christ. And that time was training for them. They were training because the Lord was going to leave them at a certain point and he was going to have, he was going to need to have them prepared for what was coming. And as a Christian, all of us need training. We need our time of training. And we are not giving the Lord time to train us and to teach us the things that we need to know so we can become disciples for him. How are we going to be disciples? It won't happen overnight. How are we going to be heroes for Jesus? It won't happen overnight. How are we going to be warriors for Christ? It won't happen overnight. We have to be trained. And a lot of us are not giving Jesus the time to train us, to teach us. And when the things happen that need to happen before the Christ, before Christ comes, we will not be prepared. See, many believers are going to fall in the trap of the things that are coming because they're not prepared. They're not reading scriptures. They're not, they're not preparing themselves for what is to come. We are not preparing ourselves. We're not preparing our children. We're not preparing our loved ones. We are sat in our Netflix shows. We are sat in our Instagram this. We are doing this. We are doing that. We are doing everything else. But the one thing that we need to do, we are failing to do. The one thing we need to do, we are failing to do. And let me tell you, you know you fail yourself, but you fail your children too if you are not preparing them for what is to come. So what are we going to say to the Lord when he comes? What are we going to say? What are we going to say? Because he is coming, whether we believe it or not. He's coming. He's coming soon. Sooner than we think. And he needs us to get on our knees. Repent of our sins. Pray that it pours love into our hearts so that we can spread his gospel, spread his word. Help our brothers and sisters. Because see, the Lord doesn't need us, but our brothers and sisters need us. They need us. So are we just going to sit down and not do anything for them? Give up our time, give up our money, give up our resources so he can use those for the people that need it. Because the Lord can see the need that is upon our land. See, now our land is broken. People are dying. The enemy is taking over. And a lot of people want to say that this is God's doing, but I'm not going to say that. 
all I know is God is showing me what is really happening in this world. And he's, he's showing me that how this disease is getting around. And it's up to us to really take, take up prayer. Even if it's an hour a day and you don't have to pray for a whole hour straight. You can split 30 minutes, 20 minutes. I don't care. There's 24 hours in a day. Even if it's 10 minutes um, a, a, a time, we can still make up to an hour. An hour of prayer is not, it's really not much. We have 24 hours in a day. And some of us can't even pray for more than 15, 20 minutes. See, and we, and we say we're ready. We are not ready. We are not ready for what is coming. And now is the time we need to be preparing ourselves. We need to be preparing ourselves, brothers and sisters, because what's about to happen, if we are not prepared, oh, how many more will die? How many more souls will be lost? Please, we need to pray. We need to take this seriously. Things are happening. And now is not the time, as, 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 as much as we can cover ourselves with Jesus' blood, as much as we can hold on to the promises that Jesus has given us, that's all wonderful because those things are true and Jesus doesn't lie. God never lies. His promises will surely come to pass. But God wants us to be sensitive to what is happening. He wants us to give up ourselves at this time. Give up our own pleasures. Give up our own desires. Give up our own wants. So many people sitting around saying, I'm bored. I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. Now is not the time for us to be bored. It's not the time for you to be bored. I'm saying it. I don't care who's going to come for me. I don't quite care. Some people want to sit and justify their boredom. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Now is not the, especially if you're a Christian. Now is not the time to be bored. There's so much work to be done. God has given us this time for a reason. Ask him why he has given you this free time. Go to God and ask him. He will tell you himself. I don't need to come and tell you. You don't need to listen to me. Go and ask the Lord why he's given us this free time. And he will show it to you. And you will be shook. You will be shook. You, you will regret all the time that you were sitting not doing much. Thinking you're bored. Because there's much to be done. And if we are not doing what needs to be done, we are failing ourselves and we are failing our brothers and sisters. That's all I have to say today. I mean, if there's anyone else that has something to add to this, because I just came and had to speak. I haven't really used social media like this before to really, I've been speaking on things, but I haven't really spoken this, this passionately about something and, and, and a lot is happening and people are dying. Like I said, it's, it's, it's going to be 5,000 people any day now in the UK that have died. And if you look around the world, thousands more have died. And if we're not careful, billions will die. And like I said, it's not about you touching your neighbor. You can sit in your house and catch this thing. Because this thing has been spread in the spiritual realm. It's been spread in the spiritual realm, my friend. And the only way we can fight and attack the spiritual realm is through our prayers. Our prayers are the only thing that we need to be deploying to fight this thing. And if we are not fighting it, how can the Lord fight on our behalf? We sit and we're quoting scriptures. Oh, heal our land, Lord. Heal our land. The Lord says, I need you to pray. Your prayers are need are what will, 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 will spike action into in, in, in the spiritual realm. Your prayers are what will bring action into place. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Love your brothers and sisters enough to pray, pray, pray. Yes, be, be, be strong in your faith and cover yourself. Cover yourself with, uh, uh, with the blood of Jesus and cover your family with the blood of Jesus. Absolutely. But at the same time, he needs us to pray and deploy the angels. Because without our prayers, the angels will not be deployed. So if we're sitting there and we're just expecting the pastor to pray, expecting that one to fast, expecting this one to do the work, then it's going to be a shortage. Imagine if we all get in prayer and all the angels are deployed, then our land will be healed because we have let the Lord use us to deploy these prayers. But if we just sit there and wait on the Lord to heal our land because we just think, oh, yeah, God is in control, blah, 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 blah. And we don't do much to play our part for, 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 for our land to be healed, then it won't happen. We have to repent of our sins and we have to pray because the prayer of a righteous man, there's no such thing as a prayer of a righteous man to break down barriers and to make things happen. Let me tell you, I have, I have, I have experienced this for myself. See, I used to pray before, like I said, I would pray when I needed something and those things wouldn't really happen. They wouldn't really come to pass. I will fast and nothing will really happen. But lately I've been praying and things have been happening. I've been praying and results have been coming to pass just like that and like I tell you when we repent and we start obeying Christ and living according to his plan our prayers are so much more powerful because it comes from a place a place a heart that the Lord has cleansed a heart that the Lord is working on and a prayer like that I'm telling you will move mountains so this is what we ought to be doing let the Lord cleanse us and, and, and help us repent of our sins and our prayers will move this disease out of the way and it will bring restoration upon our land. I'm sweating. 
I'm sweating and I'm sweating and I, 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 I don't quite care much either. But I'm just going to end this message now and I'm just going to say, let, let's take this seriously. Let's really, let's really put ourselves in the place of those in hospital. Put ourselves in the place of the nurses, those putting themselves in the front line. It's not fair on them. They need help. And m many of us can't help because we don't have the training. We don't have the facilities to go and, and, and deploy ourselves and volunteer and, and, and be of help and be of service to them. So that the one, But the one thing the Lord has given us that we can be of help to, to, the, world, to the world at this time is our prayers. Our prayers can be of help to the world. And if we are not praying, then we are not using the thing that the Lord has given us. The gift that he has given us to be able to help our brethren. Because a lot of us will say, oh, but I can't really do much to help. I just have to stay home, blah, blah, blah. The Lord says pray. The world is saying stay home, the Lord is saying pray. So I'm going to end this now and I just want to speak the blessing of the Lord upon your life and I pray that the, the, the mercy, favour of the Lord and the hand of our faithful God be upon your life. In Jesus' name.